Okay, welcome to another of our short films on improving our writing style. This film concentrates on choosing adverbials. We've talked a little bit about adverbials in uh, a few of these other uh, lessons. Make sure that you have a pen and paper handy so that you don't have to watch it all over again in order to complete the assignment or study for the exam. Um, and you do want to watch these in sequence. I'll go over some information just by review, but it's easy to get lost if you haven't been building a vocabulary as you go. Before we get into talking about adverbial phrases, let's just go back to adverbs for a minute. Remember that adverbs are words that uh, give information about the verb. They modify the verb. There are really two kinds of adverbs. There are adverbs of time and place, and there are adverbs of manner. Um, adverbs of time and place, like then, now, there, soon, never, always, these don't fit what we normally think of as adverbs because typically people think of adverbs as only those L-Y words. L-Y words are typically the adverbs of manner. This gives information about how something happened, not necessarily when it happened or where it happened. As we've discussed in previous lectures, phrases and clauses can perform the same function as an adverb. That is, they, they work in an adverb-like way. They add information about time, place, reason, or manner. Uh, these are called adverbial phrases or adverbial clauses, and this lesson is primarily about all the different varieties and the moves that you have available to you with them. One great thing about adverbials is their movability. You can give adverbial information in a lot of different places, including the beginning of sentences. Take a look at the difference between these two sentences, which are the same in terms of the numbers of word and basically in terms of information. My roommate had three midterms yesterday, versus yesterday, my, my roommate had three midterms. The rhythm is different in these sentences, and I can give uh, my reader a heads up about what's going on by putting yesterday or an adverbial at the beginning of the sentence rather than at the end. Let's take a look at a piece of writing that has a number of opening adverbials. In modern times, we have never seen the birth of an island as large as Ascension, but now and then there is a report of a small island appearing where none was before. Perhaps a month, a year, five years later, the island has disappeared into the sea again. These are the little stillborn islands, doomed to only a brief emergence above the sea. Pay attention to how these opening adverbials orient the reader to the information in the sentence. If we just walked into each of these sentences without any kind of adverbial, it would be much choppier. We have never seen the birth of an island as large as Ascension. There is a report of a small island appearing where none was before. The opening adverbial not only gives crucial information, but it orients us about the relationship between the ideas. Let's take a look at a longer passage that illustrates something of the same thing. Sometimes the disintegration takes abrupt and violent form. The greatest explosion of historic time was the literal evisceration of the island of Krakatoa. In 1680, there had been a promontory eruption on this small island in Sunda Strait between Java and Sumatra in the Netherlands. Indies. 200 years later, there had been a series of earthquakes. In the spring of 1882, smoke and steam began to ascend from fissures in the volcanic cone. The ground became noticeably warm, and warning rumblings and hissings came from the volcano. Then, on the 27th of August, Krakatoa literally exploded. In an appalling series of eruptions that lasted two days, the whole northern half of the cone was carried away. The sudden inrush of ocean water added the fury of superheated steam to the cauldron. When the inferno of white-hot lava, molten rock, steam, and smoke had finally subsided, the island that had stood 1,400 feet above the sea had become a cavity 1,000 feet below sea level. Only along one edge of the former crater did a remnant of the island remain. Throughout this passage, adverbials segue information between sentence and sentence and always situate us in a place where we can understand the main clause. There really are numerous options for adverbial phrases. Uh, I'm going to walk through some of them, uh, beginning with the prepositional phrase. Prepositional phrase is the most common adverbial. It's a two-part structure, and it's built around a preposition and its object. Remember that prepositions are those words that orient us towards something. I'll give you some examples. There are prepositions of direction, like toward, beyond, and across. If you put these in connection with a noun phrase, its object, we get prepositional phrases, toward the pond, beyond the ridge, across the field. You'll notice that the remaining categories fit in exactly with the different types of adverbs that we had before, place, time, duration, manner, cause. Consider some of these prepositional phrases and what they add, near the marina, on Tuesday afternoon, until 3 o'clock, in an appalling series of eruptions, 
because of the storm. These give additional information about the verb in the sentence, the chief action of the sentence. Another kind of adverbial is the subordinate clause. We had an entire lesson on subordination and it's worth remembering that. Uh, subordinate clauses contain the most information of all the adverbials because they always contain a subject and a predicate. That's what makes them into a clause. Remember, a clause always has a subject and a verb pair, but a subordinate clause can't stand on its own. These subordinate clauses are giving additional information about the conditions under which a particular action happens in the main clause. These examples should be familiar to us by now. The fans cheered when Fernando stepped up to the plate. On Tuesday night, we ordered pizza because no one wanted to cook. When the inferno of white-hot lava, molten rock, steam, and smoke had finally subsided, the island that had stood 1,400 feet above the sea had become a cavity 1,000 feet below sea level. Pay attention to the fact that each of the underlying passages, that is the subordinate clause, contain a subject and verb pair. Fernando stepped up. No one wanted to cook. The inferno had finally subsided. The reason these subordinate clauses can't stand on their own is because of the subordinator that's in front of them. Here we have when and because. Let's review really quickly the subordinating conjunctions. We considered these in greater depth in the lesson on subordination. These kinds of words, subordinating conjunctions, make a independent clause into a dependent clause when you add them at the beginning. There are subordinating conjunctions of time, concession, contingency and condition, reason, result, comparison, and contrast. Another important kind of adverbial is the infinitive phrase. This is really easy to recognize. Um, the way that you put them together is to plus the present tense of the verb. Some examples here, to study, to keep, to bring, to scrutinize, to read, etc. These are infinitives, and infinitive phrases are built around them. Take a look at these examples. To save money, I often eat lunch at my desk. I got up early this morning to study for my Spanish test. To keep your grades up, you ought to follow a regular schedule. Notice first that these are phrases, not clauses. Uh, they don't have a subject for a pair, like the subordinate clauses that we just looked at. Notice also that they are almost always performing the role of giving a reason for an action in the main clause. Why do I often eat lunch at my desk to save money? Why did I get up early this morning to study for my Spanish test? They're answering the why question. It's already assignment time. For this assignment, I want you to write 10 sentences that use adverbial structures. I want you to try out all the possibilities that I outlined here. Underline all the adverbial structures and identify the form of each. Is it a straight up adverb? Is it a noun or a noun phrase? A prepositional phrase? Subordinate, a subordinate clause? A verb phrase like an infinitive phrase? Make sure that you correctly identify it. Then identify the kind of information that the adverbial is providing. Time, frequency, duration, place, reason, manner, condition. Good luck.